you want to talk about how poor Lance is actually is as a person? Oh, know. Lance was amazing. Um, even though his religious background. <laughs> He actually, I forgot about that until I watched his Nine Club. Oh, really? Yeah. Dude. Yeah, no, his Nine Club. Yeah. Well, the thing with Lance was every time I ran into him until the last Rock the Cradle contest, the pro contest they threw at the downtown part, he'd always been with Cab. And Cab, sorry, didn't like Texas, didn't like Texans, and was kind of a jerk. So we always, I always thought Lance was, and Kenny Payton had st- spent a summer with him and swore he was cool. And so we were at the last Rock the Cradle, and we're trying to explain the difference between a 540 and a McTwist to somebody. So we're standing outside the park. I was like, hey, now you still do McTwist. And he's like, not since I quit pay, having to pay for diapers. <laughs> so apparently after he, you know, got the company going and all that, he didn't have to do 540s. And he was the first one I ever saw do, he not only did them back to back, his second one would be higher. We said, it was at the 86 NSA, the McGill one. Lance did one, did one a little bit higher, and did another one a little bit higher. Nobody had done three at that point. And he's freaking climbing. Like, oh, what I was saying was when we ran into him in like 2010 or 11, they did, when they, after they finished the Houston part, they did three pro contests down there, Rock the Cradle. And uh, then Barry got tired of all the bullshit that goes into setting up a pro contest. But so anyway, so we go, I asked Lance if he still did. We twist because you know so we were trying to explain the difference, and so we're both using our hands trying to explain to like Ben and Rainy and those guys the difference between a 540 and a twist, you know, because there weren't that many people in the 80s that actually did. I mean, the twist looks like you throw a, like a, a baton in there. Yeah, you know how it kind of whoop whoop whoop. It's, a, it's an actual twist. That's what people, yeah, 540 is. It's, it's not a flash, man. Yeah. It's a ooh, thing, and. uh and so anyway, we ended up talking to him for about yeah. 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. It was somebody, it was like the amateur's practice time, and so he had time to talk to us. And he ended up being really funny and cool. Yeah. You know, just like Phillips and Kenny always said he was. So, um, Tony Hawk. Um, first time I met him was, I saw him skate at 83. He just turned pro, I think. But that was Phillips contest, bar none. And then I met him briefly in '85 at the Shut Up and Skate because I was judging that one. Mm-hmm. I was like full till you know everybody was there. One, you know, Lance McGill, the whole nine yards. Mm-hmm. Um, then I guess I really when did I judge one the first time? It was like '87 or '88. I judged a couple of three contests with him in Texas. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the best one was the '89 one at Lone Star. Him and Joe Johnson came in for the contest. <clears throat> and so we were like the three judges. Phillips was there. So it was the in-between practice sessions demos between the pros was kind of fun. Because there was definitely some one up shit between Phillips and Hawk. Yeah, it was a very friendly rivalry. But, I mean, a lot of the stuff you read in the magazines is a little overblown. And uh, so, no, so Hawk was fun. We just, you know, we were just sitting up there judging, talking and stuff. And so he was pretty cool. And, uh. Him and Joe Johnson, back then I was like 6'1", uh, 155, 160 pounds. Right. Eh, maybe 170. But they were about shoulder-wise and height the same as me. And so they were riding for uh, Stav and Johnson at a clothing company called Electric Ocean. And so they would change shirts after every demo. Because it it's Texas, it's freaking... Memorial, it's like right before Memorial Day, but it's like July hot. It's 100 and something. And so they were like... Hey, you wear the same size shirts. You want these shirts? I was like, yeah. So they kept giving me their wet shirts. So they wouldn't have to stick them back in their laundry or just throw them away. Mm-hmm. And we ended up selling Hawk's last shirt. I was like, hey, man, let's get some money for some beer. Which, yeah, we drank afterwards. And so we went out there. I was like, I bet we can get 50 bucks for some. Tony was like, no freaking way. We got there. Some chick paid 100 bucks for it. And so we put the whole 100 into beer and ice. And... The Powell guys weren't allowed to party with the public. So Lori threw out the public. And Hogg didn't drink that many beers. I think Joe drank a few more. And there might have been some other things passed around. And uh, so we ended up hanging out just talking for two or three hours. Right. You know, and then I, seems like I judged another contest with them. And then they got me into a demo in like 90, somewhere between 90 and 92. 
those years get a little blurry.